Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape. In this video we're going to be taking a look at layers and how we can use the layers dialog box to work with them. So what are layers? You can think of layers like panes of glass. You can add elements of your image to each layer and then you can stack them on top of each other to build up an image. We have a lot more control using layers because we can toggle visibility of different layers. We can adjust their appearance using blur. We can vary their opacity. And we can lock layers so that they can't be inadvertently moved or altered. So starting with a clean document, we're going to build up a few layers. And to get our layers dialog box, if we go up to the top, We've got this symbol here that says view layers. We can either click on this, which will bring up our dialog box, or we can go into the layers tab at the top, come down to layers and click on there. So now we've got our layers dialog box. You can see that we already have one layer available. So if we get our ellipse tool, we drag out an ellipse. I think we give it a stroke just so we can see it. And we'll add a number to it. So there we have an element to our layer. So up in our layers dialog box, you can see that we've got an eye and a padlock. So the eye just toggles the visibility of the layer and the padlock locks the layer so we can't move or interfere with anything that's on the layer. So if we want to create a new layer, we can come down to this plus on our dialog box, click on the plus and we get a small box up here. In here, you can change the layer name and you can say where you want the new layer to appear. So at the moment it's set to above the current layer. We can have it below the current layer or as a sub layer of the current layer. So we'll stick with above for the time being. So we add a layer. So as you're going to see up in the dialog box, we've added a new layer. When you want to add elements to a layer, you have to make sure you've got the layer selected. So if we select layer two, we could, we could copy these with layer two selected at the top here. We can paste and we just change the fill color. And we call this, change this to two so that we've got. So now we can see what's on layer one and what's on layer two. And it looks like I've put the layer two's item on layer one. And what we can do to rectify this is if we select everything that's there and we right click, we can come up to move to layer. So let's click on that. And this allows you to move the items that are selected to a different layer. So we say we want to move it to layer two and press move. Now, Everything there is on layer two. Just while we're talking about drop down menus, if you come over to the layers box and right click on one of the layers, you get a nice little selection of options available to you. You can add, um, add layers, rename layers, uh, show and hide layers. We've got locking options and you can delete or duplicate the current layer. So it's just nice bearing in mind when you're working with the layers. So we can take our layer two bits and bobs. Actually, we group those, I think. And we group the stuff in layer one. So let's create another layer. So we have layer three, have it above the current. So add, we we'll paste in another item. We we'll change our one to a three and we we'll change the fill color of our oval to red. We've grouped those and then we can move it up onto our diagram up here. I had one selected uh, when I added the new layer above. So layer three was added above layer one. We can reorder our layers by either by either grabbing hold of the layer and moving it up physically at the top here. We can also move it 
down the bottom here so down there in the bottom uh, right hand corner of our dialog box you can see we've got arrows so we can move to the bottom we can move up one layer at a time so this works in exactly the same way as when we're working with objects in an image and we have the selection tool um, selected we've got these different options here for moving objects up and down the stack so you can do exactly the same thing with layers so when we are creating new layers let's press the add to add a new layer layer 4 we have the options above and below the current layer and we also have an option uh, as sublayer of current so if we click on sublayer so as you can see if we look up at the dialog box layer 4 has been added and it's been added as a sublayer of layer 3 so now it's indented to indicate that it's a sublayer and we've got a little arrow that allows us to collapse layer 3 down or expand it so let's get our layer 3 item we copy that we go to layer 4 we paste it we're here. Got our selection tool we change this to 4 got our selection tool again so I'm going to just change the color of 4 I'm then going to get the selection tool and I'm just going to shrink it down a bit actually it's group those together so we drag a box over the top press group and we can shrink that down so this is now a sub layer of three we can see that it's a sub layer of three if we if we click the visibility or toggle the visibility of three on and off four will disappear at the same time now we can toggle the visibility of four as a layer in its own right but three is the parent layer so that has ultimate control Another little handy feature that Inkscape has is if we come up to the top left hand corner here there's a button with the symbols for layers. This allows us to select all objects that are in visible or, or unlocked layers. So say we wanted to select everything that was in uh, layer 3. We could come over here, we could lock layer 1, we could toggle the visibility off on layer 2. If we come up and press this button it will select everything that's in layer 3 and 4. Just a handy little feature to know about. As I said at the beginning we can also come down to the bottom here and we can blur different layers. So at the moment we've got four selected so we can blur four. If we selected three as the parent layer we could blur both together. We can change the opacity of layers using the opacity and we also have blend mode which dictates how a layer interacts with the layers below it normal it's just like stacking them on top of each other so it'll obscure the via the layers below um, you've got a selection of other options probably the best thing to do is have a little play with them see what they do i might cover it in a future tutorial but i'll leave it for now but one thing i forgot to mention is if we add a layer we can add, add our layers or add layer 5 if we want to remove a layer we can select layer 5 and we can come down to the little subtract button down the bottom here delete the current layer so we delete that and it removes your layer 5 from the top there so the last thing I wanted to take a look at was grouping objects together on different layers um, this works in much the same way as when we group objects on a single layer and if there's something between them all of the items get brought forwards to the front object so they're grouped together um, adjacent to each other so if we take for example the object on layer one hold down shift and select the object on layer three now go up to group and group them it brings the object from layer one forwards onto layer three so it sits alongside our layer 3 object so if we toggle the visibility on layer 3 now you can see that that item has been brought forwards and added to layer 3 and if we toggle the visibility on layer 1 there's no longer anything there so I think that covers everything I wanted to look at in this video in the next video I'm going to introduce you to the objects dialog box this is very similar to layers but gives you a lot more detail of your project that you're working on as well as layers you can break it down into groups paths text 
and you can sit there and work on individual items and it just gives a lot more possibilities. I hope this video has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.